You know, one of the things I've never really tired of doing is watching trucks being put together, particularly when those trucks are made in Australia and for Australia. Now, I'm at Volvo's Wakehold plant on the outskirts of Brisbane, and before much longer, there's going to be something very unique going down this line, and it's made for Australia. It is the Globetrotter XXL cab. It's a long-haul cab for a long-haul business, and that's exactly what we intend to do with it over the next couple of days, but I'll tell you a little bit more about that tomorrow. product like this. Volvo may be a Swedish company, but this is a truck built in Australia for Australia. If it wasn't built here and engineered for here, it certainly wouldn't survive out here at these weights and the different demands that get put on trucks in this country. Like I said, there's no better way to test a long haul truck than to take it on a long haul. And we started in Brisbane this morning as a B double. We're now in Toowoomba, hooked up as a road train double, and we're heading west. This truck will grow a lot more yet before we're finished, before we get to Darwin anyway. But it's not just about the truck either, and I'm not driving it alone because I'm in the company of a guy who's acknowledged as one of the true experts in road train operation, and that's Bill Manton. And um, I'm really excited about going for a run with him. Because uh, if there's one person's advice I will take, it'll be his. Hand on heart. Best night's sleep I've ever had in a Volvo. Certainly the most comfortable Volvo cab I've ever slept in. We're at Morven on the way to Darwin. I've got a few more nights to spend in it, but I hope they're all as good as last night. Maybe I was just tired anyway, but uh, nah, really nice cab, really nice bunk, and the mattress is just absolutely on the money. say the way this thing's tracking and handling at the moment is just extraordinarily good for a truck that's 120 tons 53 meters long it really is just quite extraordinary how far evolution has come with trucks the major reason for the exercise of course is the bunk I slept in it last night for the first time that was at Morven but it's early in the trip and I'm already prepared to go out on a limb and say this is the best European sleeper on the market, bar none. This truck, particularly on these wide profile single steer tyres, truly it, it, it is as good as anything on the market, in my opinion. But you'd be hard pressed to find a truck, I believe, that handles as well as this at these weights on these roads. As I said, it's a truly nice bit of gear. And it's a pleasure after a long day to um, climb into a bunk 
that actually suits our market. Anyway, that's enough for me for now. Got to make them all. There's a lot of um, features in this cab for the driver. There's a lot of overhead space up the front here, above the bunk. Um, the lights are well positioned so that if you wake up in the middle of the night and you want to turn the light on, no dramas. But a really nifty thing, there's a lot of good features in this, including the television up here. But what is really nifty is that down here, there's a button and you can actually lift this side of the bunk up so that you can just recline and look up and watch, watch the telly. You know, it's just another thing that just makes things a little bit easier and life a little bit more enjoyable when you've got your time to yourself. <laughs> the iconic three ways roadhouse where the Stewart Highway meets the Barclay Highway. Turn right off the Barclay and nearly a thousand k's up the road there's Darwin. Behind me here is a well-known mural, it's about road trains of course, and this is road train country. Funny thing road trains, you know, like they have this mystical view about them, but at the end of the day they are a quintessentially Australian invention if you like. What a lot of people might lose sight of though is just how efficient they are. They are one of the most efficient forms, if not the most efficient form of freight movement by road anywhere. Our transport industry is not really appreciated for what it does. And it's not until you come out here and see what these trucks can do and how they do it in summer temperatures of 50 degrees or flooding uh, cyclones or whatever else. The amount of technology that is in these trucks, like I'm driving this Volvo XXL. What a stunning piece of equipment it is. It is just so advanced in so many ways. The core of this story is about the new cab. It's bigger for, better for drivers to sleep in. But at the end of the day, it's also about the way it moves freight. This is what they call a BAB quad combination, four trailers. It's about, as I said earlier, it's 120 tonne, 53 metres long. But what a superbly good piece of gear it is to drive. It's just an astonishing industry and I am totally proud to be a part of it. And I think people should take a little bit more regard. But when you see the sort of mindset and the sort of technology and the sort of professionalism that can come through when there's a little bit of appreciation and a little bit of respect, you know, we are indeed a lucky country. And uh, we're lucky to have things like road trains. We're lucky to have people who can drive them properly. We're lucky to have people who are willing to come out here and do a hard job in a hard country. You know, that's my soapbox for the moment. I'm going to Darwin, so I'll see you up the other end. been a great exercise. Got one more day to go into Darwin. And to be able to do exercises like this, you, you feel quite privileged that um, companies think enough of you to give you their truck, especially a truck like this. 
and uh, just say, let us know what you think. Well, what I think is this cab's been long overdue. It's here now, though. It's been perfectly tested. What the friggin' hell is that? Sure, I can't see. No. Woody's over there with a friggin'... What's going on with the suit? Dinner is served. Oh, you are kidding me. Uh, is he serious about this? He's serious. Is he? <laughs> Woody, I've always known you had some very, very strange ways, but, mate, I'm impressed, shattered, unbelievable. What the? Yeah, what every truckie deserves at the end of a long day, candle-lit dinner out in the Northern Territory skyline. The trouble with this sort of romance, Sean, is that um, the romantic other half is, a, what, uh, about 4,000 k's away. What is he, though? Yeah, but he's not my type. <laughs> not at all. About 20 k's south of Darwin. I'm gonna get out of the truck now and go home. This truck's on its maiden voyage. It's run from Brisbane to Darwin. More than 90% of the trip has been as a, as a quad trailer at 120 tonnes. And the fuel we got out of this thing is quite extraordinary. I owe a lot of it to the truck, but I also owe some of it to a gentleman standing over here. Bill Manton from Volvo, who has taught me the finer details. I thought I was a reasonably good driver. I think after this trip, I'm a marginally better driver again. And um, I owe him a lot of thanks for that. But at the end of the day, I think Bill might have learned a couple of things from our conversations in cabs anyway. And I suppose when it's all boiled down, you're never too old to learn, are you, Bill? No, I won't know. Thanks, mate. No worries, thank you. Yeah. That's it, it's been a great trip. Well, I'm gonna go and make another mile now, only this time it'll be at 35,000 feet.